All right, so welcome to these video clips now about the rescue exercises. So this one is going to be about rescue exercise number seven, uh, dealing with an unconscious diver at the surface. So we're going to see a couple of methods, one using pocket mask and the other one uh, using mouth to mouth. So in this case, the first thing we do is when we approach is diver, diver, are you okay? Are you okay? We want to find out if they're just snorkeling or if they are unconscious. So by throwing water on the head like that, that should wake them up, right? So if nothing happened, then at this time, I'm gonna approach the diver and then turn the diver around, right? First thing we wanna do though, is make sure that we can inflate the BCD, right? So if we have air in the BCD, you wanna make sure you can inflate a little bit. So that's the first thing to do. The other thing is to make sure you as the rescuer, you also have some air in your BCD so you're not going anywhere, right? So in this case, uh, I made sure that we got buoyancy, I got my buoyancy. Now the next step is truly making sure the diver is not gonna go back on the water. And for this, we are going to remove the weights. So the first thing we wanna do is we're going to remove the weight belt, right? So in this case, we'll look at both weight belt and integrated weight. A little tip I can share with you is as you approach to remove the weight system, always come from the right, right? So this is going to help you. It's going to help you, one, with the weight belt because it's a right hand release. So coming from here allows you to open the belt like this and simply pull it out like that. And also, as you can see, I make sure that the belt is away from the diver before I drop it, right? So if you come to the right, that's what you can do. If it's gonna be a integrated weight system, even if you come to the right, it'll work as well, right? So that's a nice little tip there. I also want to make sure that I'm not going to go underwater. So I will also grab my right hand release and remove my belt. Again, making sure it's away from my body before I drop it. So now I'm pretty sure the diver is going to stay at the surface, right? I remove all the weights that are in there. So now I'm also going to remove the regulator. Again, making sure that when I bring the regulator down, I don't drop it this way where it could be free flowing. So I'm just going to point it down like that uh, because frankly, we want to look very cool when we do that, right? So always do this. Now, I'm also going to remove the mask. So I'm going to remove it like that and then take it away. And for myself, I'm going to remove my my mask as well. Now, uh, what we want to do is check if the uh, diver is breathing. So for this, it's very important that we keep an open airway and then we do the uh, look, listen and feel technique, right? So look means looking at the chest, right? We want to look at the chest, see if it rises because the victim is breathing. Look, listen means with our ear, we want to be close to the open airway, making sure that you can maybe uh, listen to the breathing if there is any. Look, listen and feel. Feel is also with your ear close to the airway. If you feel that they're breathing, that's going to help you decide as well. So in this case, to be able to do this, I want to position myself, open the airway, and then get very close to the mouth and the nose, right? So that's the position you wanna be in. You also wanna do this for up to 10 seconds, right? So up to 10, uh, you just wanna make realistic time that allows you to see if they're breathing or not, right? So I'm gonna go in the position, one, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000, four, 1,000, five, 1,000, six, 1,000, seven, 1,000, eight, 1,000, nine, 1,000 not breathing so because the diver is not breathing at this point i want to call for help 
So I'm going to do this in a normal voice, right? Because if you're doing any type of exercises, maybe in open water, you don't want to really alert the emergency services, but you still want to train uh, the rescue diver and dive masters to call for help, right? So use this signal. I need help. I need help. Call 911 or whatever emergency number you need to call, right? So now we know at least uh, it's underway, right? EMS is underway. So now what we need to do is to provide rescue breaths. In this case, we are going to use a pocket mask. The pocket mask can be anywhere you want. It could be in your BCD pocket. It could be like I had on, on the wrist. Basically, this is uh, for you to access so that we can run this exercise. When we use a pocket mask, we also make sure that the pointy end goes towards the bridge of the nose. Right? So don't position it the other way like that. Right? It's going to seal much better if it's positioned like this, pointy end here. Also, there is a strap. So use the strap effectively to position the pocket mask. Another thing that we see often is some of these straps are stuck under the pocket mask and that makes it difficult to seal. So make sure you take that out like that and tighten it, right? So now to give rescue breaths, it's very simple. We want to see three things, right? One, you have an open airway, so I can open the airway like this, like this. Two, we want to seal the mask. So I'm using the four point technique here, right? Where I'm pressing on all four sides making sure that we got a good seal. If it doesn't seal, it becomes very difficult to give a breath because the air is gonna escape. So we wanna do that. There are other techniques to do that. Some people use just one hand and they can come from the side. Uh, if you have big hands, that might be a way to do it. So there's tons of ways to do that. It's not just one patty way, right? But for me to have a good seal, I'm gonna use all four fingers like that. So in this case, the last thing we need to see to make sure is that when we give a breath, we do this realistically. We need to train people to be able to come almost to the hole of the pocket mask, right? So on this side, I'm just going to blow at the base of the hole here, right? And so I'm going to go up. Two breaths, right? Always two initial breaths. And then we're going to count every five seconds. We want to give a breath. So make sure you see this so that the rescuer goes all the way to the base of the tube here. So in this case, I'm going to count. And counting, it doesn't matter how you count. We want to have about five seconds in between. So if I give a breath, one, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand. So what I do here is I count to three. At four, I breathe in. And at five, I give a breath, right? So it's just a technique. There's many ways to do that. Try to keep a rhythm. That's what counts, right? If it's not exactly every five seconds, it's okay as long as it's a, a, a steady rhythm, right? So if it's every six seconds, it's not the end of the world. We want some rhythm. What we don't want to go is two seconds, 15 seconds, eight seconds, two seconds, right? So good rhythm, and we give breaths like that. As we're doing this now, we also need to start removing equipment, right? So one tip here that I see often at examination, for example, is the diver struggling to stay at the surface and also rushing to try to open as many things as possible. So let me give you a little tip here, right? One tip is, first of all, don't, don't go too fast, right? Just go nice and slow. Sometimes we give a breath. And then we look around to see, hey, what kind of equipment do we have? Then you give another breath. 
and then you pick one thing to open and you open it, right? And then you pick another one to open it and just gently do that. And if you skip one, that's fine, right? You give a breath, you can look, then give another breath, then see if you can open it. If it opens, great. Don't get caught, right? If you get caught, then you're gonna be out of rhythm. So always anticipate what you need to do. Give your breath. And then, you know, gently open what's gonna be the next buckle. And just take your time to see what's going on, right? And as you look at everything, you wanna be in a position where all you have to do is just remove the equipment, right? So right now, everything is open. All I have to do is remove it. So I'm gonna give you another little tip here. Don't remove it yet, right? Because what it does, it's providing buoyancy, right? So it provides some buoyancy to the, re to the diver while you, the rescuer, start removing your own equipment, right? So that's, that's a good tip, it usually works. Not in every situation, but in this case, it's gonna work for me. So then I continue. I'm gonna give, continue to give some breaths, and then I need to work on my equipment. So let me give you another tip here, is as I'm working on my equipment, the last thing I wanna do is start to open my cummerbund all the way at the bottom here, right? Because if I do that, my BCD is gonna go up behind me, and I'm definitely not gonna look cool. So what we don't wanna do is start at the bottom, you want to start at the top. So as you give your breath, then you wanna start at the top. So at the top, I got this I need to remove. Then I wanna go on the side. I got this side I want to remove. Then I wanna go to the other side. Make sure this is open. And I continue to give breaths like this. Good seal. And as you can see now, everything is open but the cummerbund. And I still have the exact same buoyancy to play with. So now I'm not struggling at all. All I have to do is remove this. So when I'm ready and I give a breath, all I have to do is open this. And that's it. This thing is just going away, right? Nice and smooth. And then all I have to do now is focus on the victim now. Now, all I have to do is remove the victim's BCD. Again, a little tip here. Since we're gonna remove it, we're gonna make it a lot easier for us if we remove some of the air that we have, right? So I'm gonna start by removing some of the air here. I'm gonna make sure I'm holding the victim. I'm giving some breath. So now it's gonna be a little easier to remove. The other tip I wanna give you is when you're gonna be removing the equipment, don't push it away, right? So because if now, and I see this very often, the instructor candidate is pushing the BCD away and the BCD starts to get stuck under the hip, then gets to, it's stuck under the leg, and then it becomes difficult because you need to go to the side, take care of it, give a breath, go to the side. So it's not easy. So uh, instead of pushing away, we're gonna pull. Because if I pull a little bit, I can always pull more until everything's gone. So in this case, I would give a breath and then hold the neck like this and pull. And if it doesn't come out completely, I can still give another breath and then pull some more. So I can always reach it, right? I can always reach it. And now I'm going to use my chest here. That's going to help with holding the head, keeping it up, open, and give breath like that. And then I can start towing, right? Because now we're good to go. Okay, so this is how we're doing the rescue exercise number seven, using a pocket mask 
and using a weight system that's a weight bound. Okay? Good.